Welcome back to Python scripting in Unreal Engine. This time we're going to create a prefix script for our assets. Here in Unreal we can see that we have different elements, different assets of different kinds. We want to prefix each of those with a specific value. As we've seen before, we start by importing Unreal into our scope. The next step is to instantiate the classes we will use in this tutorial. We again want to have the editor util to get the selected elements. We create a new variable called selected assets that will hold a list of selected assets. And just like before, we want to keep track of the number of assets that have been altered through our script. So we get the length of our assets and also add a second variable called prefix, which keeps track of the number of elements that have been altered. The next step is to use a for each loop to iterate over all the assets. We need a few pieces of information for each asset, which is going to be the class instance name and the clear text name. As we've seen before, the asset name can be retrieved through the getFName method of the object base object. The object base also contains another method called getClass, which will give us the class instance of the specific asset. In order to get more information about what exactly the asset class variable holds, we will print it out here. As a general rule, it's always good to add enough logging for yourself to understand what is actually going on in your script. Switching over to the Unreal Engine and selecting all of our assets, if we execute our script, we can now see that we actually get a not too useful form of our class object. In this case, we only want to have the clear text name of the specific element class. In order to get that, we switch back to our script and we define another variable called the class name. And in order to get the class name, we have to use another system library of the Unreal Engine. This system library class has a method called getClassDisplayName, which will give us the clear text name of the given class. Since the systemLib variable is not declared yet, we will add it to our instance section of the script and create a new instance of the system library element. To get the right element printed, we want to change that from asset class to class name, switch back to our Unreal Engine and re-execute our script. We can see that we now get the clear text names of our assets. The next step will be to get a prefix for each asset based on their class. The simplest way to do this for this script is to have a dictionary which maps from each asset class to the given prefix. So let's create a prefix mapping variable that holds the dictionary each key will be an asset class and the value of each key will be the given prefix. I already have this list here, so I will just copy and paste some of them and add them here so we have a full list for now. And now we can replace this section down here and we just get the prefix mapping of the given class name. Of course, we have to use the variable here instead of a string and we will get a non-type object if there is no key. The non-type object then allows us to do a simple if condition and give the user some information by logging that there is no available mapping for this class. Switching back to the Unreal Engine, we can now add a new object that is not in our list, for example, media player. Select everything and execute our script. The logging will show us an information that there is no mapping for the asset of media player. Having it the same color is a little bit confusing, so let's choose log warning instead. Re-executing the script in Unreal will show us that it's now highlighted in yellow. The last step we have to do for the non-type case is to add a continue statement. This skips the current asset and continues with the next one. 
As a next step, we want to check that our asset name doesn't already start with a given prefix. Because only if it does not start with it, we want to append the prefix to the front of our name. So if our asset name doesn't already start with the prefix, we want to rename the asset and add the prefix. Therefore, we need a variable called the new name, which is a combination of the class prefix and the current asset name. Once we have the new name defined, we can use the editor util to call the rename asset method. The two parameters we can pass to this method are the asset itself and the new name. In order to keep track of the prefixed elements, we will increment our prefixed variable by one here. As before, we want to add suitable logging to our script. We have to decide between two cases here. Either the asset has been renamed and the prefix appended, or the asset has been kept as it is. The last logging statement that we want to adjust is the final output log that will give us an indication of how many elements have been prefixed. Switching back to the Unreal Engine and executing our script, we get an error. The root of this error is the object base getFName method, which returns a name object instead of a simple string. So in order to get the actual string and use the starts with method, we have to use the system library to get the asset name. With this simple fix in place, we can switch back to the Unreal Engine, re-execute our script, and we will see that it does some work and our elements have been prefixed. If we take a look at the media player, we can see that we still get the log warning, but we can quickly fix that by adding a new element to our dictionary, then switching back to the Unreal Engine and just re-executing our script. However, by keeping the setup this way, whenever we have to add a new asset to our list, we need to edit the actual code. An alternative approach would be to use a config file or a JSON file. So let's remove all of the content here and instead load the prefix mapping JSON file, which we've previously used to copy the information from. In order to load the content from the file, we will use the context manager open command of Python. Here we can replace the prefix mapping with the json.loads method which loads the content of the json file. We have to provide two elements to the open method. One is the operation which will be read in our case and the first one will be the full path to our json file. By using this approach whenever we have to do some changes or add some elements we simply have to edit the json file instead of our code base. One important thing to note is that we always have to use double backslash instead of single backslashes if we use them in paths. The last step before revalidating our script is to import the JSON library into our scope. If we save our script and switch back to the Unreal Engine and retry our script, we can see that it still correctly prefixes our elements. In this tutorial, we took a look at the system library, which will be more important in the future. So let's move on to even more complex and engaging scripts.